hi all this video lecture we will see about uh, vehicular iot so when i say vehicular iot it is nothing but uh, connected vehicles uh, so in a connected vehicular environment the vehicles can be uh, able to communicate uh, the information among themselves so that is they can share the information among themselves and uh, like this iot will help the vehicle to sense both the internal and external environment and uh, from which we can make autonomous decisions so you all aware of uh, autonomous vehicles uh, which can sense the information and it can make decisions that is one example of uh, vehicular iot so uh, you look at the architecture of vehicular iot you will be having the devices uh, uh, so at the lower end, we will be uh, sensing the environment both internally and externally, internally in the sense within the vehicle and outside the vehicle. And after the uh, data are sensed, that is collected and shared. And uh, based on the information, we go for event triggering. So these are all done at the device level. And when it comes to the next level for, for decision making, we go for storing it in a uh, cloud or fog when it comes to a lightweight device we go for fog computing and when it comes to a higher end uh, processing or maybe a high weight process then in that case we go for cloud computing so uh, maybe uh, if you want to make a decision near uh, with the help of a short term storage for a small scale analytics then we use fog computing and uh, when it comes to a heavy analytics we go for cloud computing so these are all the components of vehicular IoT. So you have, uh, you can use sensors, satellites uh, for uh, collecting the data. Uh, then you can have uh, wireless connectivity for transferring the data to cloud or fog. Then you can have a roadside unit for communication and then uh, you will have an analytics component. Okay, let us see in detail about the components of vehicular IoT. As I told you, sensor will help you to monitor the environmental conditions. So in case of vehicular IoT systems, there are two types of sensors. One is internal sensor, another one is external sensor. So this internal sensors are uh, like uh, this will be placed within the vehicle and this helps you to sense the parameters that is associated with the vehicle say for example uh, gps ultrasonic sensor proximity sensors pressure sensors temperature sensor all that comes into the category of internal sensor this helps you to collect the data within the vehicle and this will be connected with the processor board and from which the data will be transmitted to the cloud and uh, in case of external sensor, this helps you to sense the information outside the vehicle. So this external sensors uh, will be used for collecting the data outside the environment. One example is the sensor that is used in the smart traffic system. Uh, like, uh, sorry, not smart uh, traffic system. It is smart parking system where uh, the a vehicle can be able to sense the vacant parking slot and you can uh, park your vehicle there. So you can have on-road cameras to capture the still images and videos. And this images and videos can be processed further and for uh, making the decisions. Okay, so you can use uh, camera sensors. Uh, you can also use light sensors, etc. Rainfall sensors, something like this you can use for sensing the uh, environmental parameters that is uh, outside the vehicle. So next is uh, satellite. You can use satellites for uh, uh, tracking the vehicle and detect the on-road crashes. So this satellite image is useful for de detecting the on-road congestions and blocks in the roads. So autonomous, uh, uh, autonomous vehicle tracking, uh, crash detection are the main features Okay, where uh, you can deploy satellites. As I told you, for, uh, once the data has been collected through satellites or camera or sensor, whatever it is, the data has to be transmitted to the roadside unit for further processing. From roadside unit, the data will be transferred to Kanaya Cloud. So this uh, for this transmission, you go for Wi-Fi. 
that is uh, wireless connectivity you can use wi-fi you can use bluetooth etc for com uh, communication okay then uh, roadside unit this is nothing but a static entity which is equipped with sensors communication unit and fog devices so uh, this uh, uh, like uh, uh, deals with the time critical applications where you need to make the decisions in real time okay so in that cases the fog devices will be attached to the roadside unit uh, so that uh, the it will process the sensed data and make the necessary action immediately okay for the real time critical applications you can use the roadside unit uh, uh, to make the decisions uh, in case if you uh, if the system involves heavy computation in that case the roadside unit can transmit the data to the cloud and then uh, it uh, it can be processed and uh, to make the decisions okay so either you can use cloud or fog computing so from the sensor the data will be sent to the roadside unit uh, and from which the data will be either uh, sent to the fog devices or cloud devices okay then uh, when it comes to the analytics component uh, we can uh, use uh, the analytics component to predict the dynamic and static conditions using analytics so example strong data analytics is required to predict the on road traffic conditions that may occur at a location after an hour okay so this is just an example so to may, uh, to predict the uh, conditions uh, you can go for analytics so when it comes to the advantages of vehicular IoT, uh, uh, one thing is it is a connected vehicle. They can share the information among the vehicles connected, fast decision making, easy tracking, then easy management, safety, and finally you record all the information. These are all the advantages of having a vehicular IoT. Thank you.